Shall I get a glass of water? Not unless you think you're going to faint. That's my boy. Well, he crawl in here to die. You got me, Hattie. He ain't exactly overdressed, is he? Hattie, why did you do it? Now, don't get any ideas like that in your head, Malone, because... Oh, hold your heart! Wait a minute! Hold your heart! Quiet now! Wait a minute! Telegram, ma'am. Thanks. Show. It's going to meet with the train tomorrow. What you doing? You douche me? What? Uh, what you thinking? I'm thinking that Kepler was probably murdered in here. Hmm? And then dragged into your compartment to make it look like I did and was trying to hide the body. Uh -huh. A little spot of blood here I hadn't noticed before. Uh -huh. Just in case that was missed, they probably planted something else in here. Like what? Like maybe the knife that killed him. We'll call somebody? Would you have mine? Maybe the police or someone. Hattie, there's one thing I don't want to see right now. It's a cop. Here we go again. Okay, where is he? Well, that depends on who you mean. My cousin Tom's living out in San Francisco. I understand the president's down in Florida fishing again. I mean Kepler. Oh, you haven't called him yet, huh? No, I haven't called him yet, huh? This note was just stuck under my door. It says you're trying to hide him someplace in here. I've got a search warrant. What do you care? I've already searched. Who wrote the note? How should I know? You're a detective, aren't you? Have you seen Kepler? Could be, but he's not exactly with us anymore. No, we only made one stop. He didn't get off there. Well, there are ways of not being on a train without getting on. Oh. Not getting on, for one. Connie Kepler probably wrote that note, Tim. She's got some idea that I was helping Steve get away. Why were you searching the train early? Why do you think? Find anything? Nothing but Lola Gilway. Without Myron Brink. You should have a talk with her. I will. Well, she's in Roman D, car 207. Okay. Look, Malone. Better not let me catch you in anything. I'm doing the best I can. See you later. Well, did you hear him? Some of the words came through kind of hazy, but I got a general idea. Could you use some proud foot punch? I don't care what it is as long as it burns. What I can't understand is why they stripped him down. Maybe he was carrying the money in a belt. Well, they had to strip him down for that? No. You want to move him pretty soon? I'll let him rest a minute. I can't have him in here, Hattie. Marino might come back. Oh, my age ain't too fussy about men in my room, but he ain't the liveliest thing I ever run into. Hattie, why don't you plead guilty? I got a honey of a defense. I've just been saving for a case like this. It looks like you're going to need it. Why don't you turn over this Marino? I'll tell him you with me where it happened. That doesn't worry me. Whoever killed Kepler must have the money. I don't want that body found until I get my cut. Jump them out the window? It's air conditioning. Windows don't open. The body's just a little too big to cram with anything I got in here. Give me that knife. Hey. Couldn't you give him to somebody else? Sure, why not? Let's give him to the green. Uh, no, international complications. That Ashen feller doesn't seem too particular about the company he kept. I think the body belongs with the next of kin. Who? Connie Kepler. Maybe she didn't want him all along. Maybe that's why she murdered him in here and pocked him in there with a hole in his back. 
You think so? Could be. I'll know if I can see her face when she finds the body in her room. How's the manager? Well, I'll send her a note, inviting her to meet me in the club car. We'll drop Kepler in the night as soon as she's left her compartment, you gang? Gang? Ain't hit nobody since O'Malley strangled with Anson Bear. Come in. A note from Mrs. Kepler. Oh, thank you. It has all been taken care of. Thank you. Some way to get her back to the shop, driven, but she sees the body. She looks better than cold lightning. Let's clear up one thing before we start. Are you pretending it's spring again? Or have you finally decided to work with me? I had to make sure you were on the square. How did you manage to do that? Well, I thought things over. And I realized that no one as lovely as you could possibly be mixed up in anything shabby or cheap. You got the approach of an old world adolescent. All right. If sincerity seems adolescent to you. You're a tireless little worker, aren't you? You keep blasting away at a girl as if she were a beachhead you were trying to take. It's just possible you mistake my motives. Nobody can mistake your motives. They're written all over you in neon. I didn't meet you here to discuss me. What about the... Have you found out anything yet? Yes and no. Well, the Gilway's on the trip. I know it. I saw her get on. Is that all you dragged me down here for? Oh, no. But you mowed down my other reason. Oh, no. You'd be a nice man for some girl who likes men like you. But right now, I'm interested only in finding Steve. Well, as a matter of fact, I... Uh, I have found out something else. You have? Tell me. Well, I'd rather not talk about it here. Couldn't we go back to your compartment? Never say die, eh, Malone? This has nothing to do with anything except the business at hand. Well, then why not here? Nobody listens. But well, I just rather not, that's all. I pack a main punch. I know. Oh, I really don't feel like going any rounds tonight, Malone. As always, Mrs. Kepler, you will find me strictly business. Oh, brother. Well, come on in. What did you expect? Silk cushions and incense? Oh, no, no. Sit down. You want a drink? No, oh, thanks. I'm on the way. Since when? Since now. All right. Let's have it. Let's have what? Whatever it was you had to tell me. Oh, that. Nobody in there. Should there be? I think I've just discovered a new kind of DT. Just possible you got on the wagon a little too late. I've heard of curious advertised on the radio. Well, book me for the next one you hear. All right. What is it? A rather peculiar thing has just happened to me. Would you mind if we made this in the morning? I certainly would. First you drag me to the club car, then you drag me all the way back here again. Now I... 
Oh, you been in your room lately? Well, no, I haven't, Miss O'Malley. Anything the matter? There's just not that chance. I might be on fire. I'm right with you, Miss O'Malley. Hey, wait a minute. In the morning, Connie. Get a good night's sleep. <laughs> to take his pulse lately? How's my room? If I heard something in here, I think he's back, so come on in. There he was, big as this. You didn't see anyone? Nope, worked out in the hall, too. This man's getting around too much. I think I'm getting used to him. Like an old friend of the family. Well, I'm not. Let's go in your room. Who's done it in your room? I don't know. This lets Connie out. She was with me when the body was moved. We might turn somebody's working together. Well, it's possible. Then again, look, I'm lovely to pull Lola. She just doesn't seem like the type. Though. I've seen a mighty lovely that killed the bare teeth. What you gonna do if Lola in there? I've got to figure out some place to tie him down for the night. <laughs> 